My name is Eric Kuchka. Uh, this is my 1971 Nissan Skyline GT. I've wanted one forever. Actually, since the first time I saw one in Fast Five, which is kind of ironic, but when Paul Walker drives black one up the hill, I was like, man, I, I didn't even know what it was. I just knew I wanted one. So throughout the years, kind of faded in and out. And then we ended up going to SEMA with a friend of mine. And I saw, I don't know, I wish I could find out whose it was, but there was a silver one there. And I probably spent half the day looking at it. Um, after that, I was kind of hooked, went on a search to try to find one. Um, that was right in the JDM boom, so you had all the importers and people saying you could get stuff and promise you things, and it was a nightmare. Um, we went through so many places, so many people who were trying to offer help, and they're like, hey, just send me a big bunch of money. And luckily, it, one came up right as I was about to quit, to be honest, one came up on bringing a trailer, um, and that's where I found it, and kind of rest was history since then. So, bought it from bringing a trailer. Uh, Guy was super great. Car was as great as I could have hoped. Uh, completely rust free, and was sort of original from there. But doing a little, just to do a walk around on it. Um, so one of the main things is the kind of the rest of mods. One of the main things we wanted to do is keep the stance. So no cut front fenders. Uh, so we kept the suspension is a 280ZX front strut modified with T3 coilover top hats and Coney yellows. So that lets us set the tire in more and not have to cut the front fenders and still run a modern tire on it. Um, kind of same thing in the rear, do a much bigger tire inside the fender with modifications to the aftermarket struts, aftermarket springs, and then some helper springs in the back to kind of set the ride height. Um, other than that, the car is pretty original to when I got it. All the other JDM goodies uh, from cut flares in the back from the GTR styling to all the emblems and the grills. As original it was, it's still a 1970s car. So it drove and it rode and it stopped like a 1970s car. Um, and then also the thing is, a lot of these cars, a lot of the Hakusukas get up badged. They get the GTR styling, GTR badging. And you know we can have the debate about up badging, what that amounts to, you know, M cars, not badge, right? And it sort of bothered me when I had it. So that's kind of where this started and the project came from is that, that it wanted to be have it be kind of worthy of wearing the GTR badge and but still kind of hold true to kind of where the car came from so and we all like I like modern stuff you know kind of that's kind of what we do here do a, kind of projects and builds like this and kind of do the rest of mod on the GTR so how many miles are approximately on the, on the engine you think so they told me 45,000 when I got oh, it wow. um, leak down and compression tested and it was fantastic so uh, tend to believe them. Um, the only thing is when I got it, it makes the RB20 input bearing noise. So I took the tranny out actually like two days ago. Um, I got a tranny from a different guy off group sure. and this one does the same. So Oh, so the other transmission. Yeah, he <laughs> told me, I asked him if it shifted fine, which it does. What I yeah. didn't ask him if it made input shaft bearing noise apparently. So we have to rebuild the other one and sure. it is what it is. From what I understand, all those RB20s do it. and. Um, just how it is. So, oh, and then the, the, the transmission made it up just fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So the RB25 actually uses the DE uses the RB20 trans. Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of one of the um, proponents of using that. It fits in the tunnel. Sure. So it's the same size as the, the RB25 like GTS trans is bigger. Sure. So. And when you were doing the motor swap, there was no real issues. Not really. Plenty of room. Yeah. It looks like a big engine, man. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it's a straight six initially, too. Yeah. Um, so this kind of moves a little bit. Sure. But it just kind of cut the floor, and we made a carbon new floor pan for it. And 
<laughs> yeah. So uh, part of the Resto mod conversion is an RB25 swap. So this is RB25DE and modified with GTR R33 ITBs um, to kind of give it that original GTR feel. So with that, it runs modern fuel injection uh, off a of Haltech 2000 with GTR yellow top injectors. So plenty of fuel if someone wanted to convert it to boost, but it's so much fun as a natural aspirated engine and the sound it makes is kind of hard to beat. So. Um, with that, it was all custom mounts, um, custom radiator with dual electric fans, and then we run a the RB25 tran the RB25 DE transmission um, with a custom drivetrain into an R200 differential uh, with LSD and CV axles from a 280ZX turbo car. So um, no more half shafts, none of that good stuff. And then with that, the new engine wanted to upgrade the brake. So you have a race booster um, for a 240Z that is modified so you don't have to bound the fenders with those but it fits into the hole and it runs a 280zx 15 16th master for the rear disc conversion um, with a willowwood proportioning valve it makes adjustable brakes back and forth so other than that and then uh, everything else has kind of been relocated it runs a, a wiring specialties harness that is kind of tucked into the engine so you don't have a lot of wires all over the place and just a relocated uh, vct solenoid um, for the R25 to run the ITBs. Um, with this, I run a whole radium fuel system um, from a surge tank in the back. The radium surge tank runs dual pumps. Uh, a, there's a Bosch circulating pump and then a Walbro in the, in the circulating tank, or in the surge tank. So there's plenty of fuel if someone wanted to convert it, um, but it runs really nice as is. And you can kind of see, and with this now, you can see the T3 top hats with the adjustable Coney yellows in them. So this is when, um, my my knowledge of it is how it goes is so when Nissan and Prince kind of merged in Japan uh, the GTRs were their first original version of like their race car and it was the dual of red cam s20 engine which by all accounts is one of the best sounding engines you'll ever hear so unfortunately they're race car engines and they're super hard to get out of Japan and um, you just probably aren't gonna get one now with the market kind of way it is so that dream kind of faded pretty fast of getting an original GTR um, almost all of these wear GTR styling from the seats to the, the flares, um, the badging. This is kind of, a, kind of a thing in Japan, how they do it. So just kind of more of a, not so much an up badge, but more of a paying tribute to what it was originally. So in that first Nissan's big entrance into the stage in the racing, and they were very successful at GTR for what it was. It was a light car, it revved really high, and for the time it made pretty good power. So that's kind of what, um, Kind of brought me to this. You know what? Like the game, like video games, like Forza and stuff like that. It's pretty realistic. Like even <laughs> when you were getting on the gas, that, like I felt it like rise, and then you know. Yeah. So that was when we first started getting it. It would uh, the rear end would sag, and it would kind of. Oh sure. So we had to work with that, and um, it takes longer to change the rear springs and does pull the engine out. So you have to drop the whole rear end. <laughs> So we ended up doing um, like helper bags, like uh, the like drag race drag guys do. Right. And so it seems silly, but they work as bump stops, and it helps the suspension in the back not bounce, and it rides great. So oh, it rides so good. Yeah, played with that and uh, adjust the conies in the front. And sure. And the the suspension's fully adjustable. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, front and rear. Um, the shocks in the rear are kind of a unique design, how they work, because they mount on the inside of the posts, kind of like a BMW does. Oh, sure. So I couldn't... So they're separate. Yeah. Yep. So I couldn't find them in the United States, and they're super expensive in Japan. Um, and the ones I had were blowing and leaking oil over the place. Sure. So they're actually shocks from an F-250. Like a Ford no F kidding. Yeah. Really? So because the truck's so heavy in the front, they actually work pretty great in the back, um, and they fit. So with that conversion, um, we added a couple of nice trim pieces. So I just, the trunk was empty when I got it. So I just added the uh, carbon fiber panels to the bottom, kind of trim it out, make it look a little bit nicer. The battery's been relocated to the trunk for the RB conversion. And then wiring and grounding is back here. And then with that, the radium fuel system is set up back here with the dual pumps and the filter. So we run a radium surge tank with their fuel pressure regulator. And then a the, the stock 
tank was modified with a fuel pickup. So it runs a 5 8 fuel pickup. So you should have more than enough fuel for anything you wanted to run in the future. Um, and then it returns to the top of the tank now. So this system is returnless. So there's only one line running to the tank. Uh, so kind of just keep it clean, less hoses, everything else running around. I started the project the week before coronavirus lockdowns. So it, it kind of means a little bit more because we were, I mean, this is all I had to do, you know? So it was in the struggle for everybody with that, um, trying to get parts and a lot of parts had to come from overseas and the trouble and the hassle with that. And um, kind of what built the shop up a little bit more here. And we made, I made a lot of my parts myself, kind of fabbed all the stuff myself and got into some things that never really did before, you know? So fortunately I still was able to work with quite a few good places here and getting parts and then um, a good group of support off of like a Facebook forum, the Hakusuka group off there, um, trying to find information on a car from the seventies that a dozen people have here in the States is tricky. So, um, but yeah, it, it it was interesting. It was, uh, I have probably so many hours into it, it would be hard for me to count. Um, we were out here all day on the weekends whenever it wasn't working, you know, and just trying to get this finished and try to get it done and um, wanted to have it for the summer. So I got real fortunate that a lot of stuff kind of came together for me with people and friends who helped me out and kind of came that way. So it turned out well. Uh, I don't, we've had a lot of cars, had a fast cars, had crazy crazy cars and nothing really takes nothing really gets people's attention or love that this does so even if you go to some of the classic guys who like old muscle cars and stuff like that this still fits in there and um and not necessarily that it needs to but you get a lot of love with this wherever it goes and it'd be hard to replace that with anything else so and then all so all the interior is fully original yep except for the gauge around Right, right, with the right, new right. gauges, yeah, yeah, but everything else is already. Headliner, like, yeah. wow. Yep. It's aged well. Yeah, honestly. it's uh, it had about 43,000 miles on it when I got it. Sure. Um, so it's pretty, now, you can, we can talk about the JDM miles, the odometer, it's, it's how real true. that is, but right, 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 right. Uh, no one really knows, you can't Carfax a 1971 right. skyline <laughs> from there, but, um, yeah, so, but all accounts, the body has all the original undercoating on it. Um, there's no rust in it, sure. and that's kind of the huge deal. You know, it was so nervous buying one of these, and you see them, and they just have rot in them. Right. And just any old car, and, you know, 1992 Civics have rot in them, and this wasn't going to be any better. But <laughs> really fortunate that this, it was a pretty prime example. The guy was uh, who I bought it from was took great care of it, and um, yeah, it came out pretty well. So, I mean, it still has some character. Oh yeah. Some. Patina, you yeah, know, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it needs that. Yeah, but it's closer to 50, well, it's over 50 years now, so yeah. and that's I think that's important because I think a lot of uh, resto mods in general, you know, you kind of once you start the build, you kind of just go all out, and yeah. sometimes you, you know, you forget to leave behind some of the originality and character, of the right? Car. And I agree 100% with that, like, you see. I, I also get the appeal of these cars that are rot rotisserie done and they look beautiful and they have beautiful paint. And, yep. um, but I kind of like the old, you know, I kind of yeah. like it to have the old feel, like there's nicks and there's, there's, you know, paint right. imperfections and some of the trim is a little bit, you know, wonky, but it has the same appeal. Like it's, it's a, it's a survivor. It has that, yeah. you know, you wouldn't go up to your grandpa and tell him his face looks wrinkly, you know, it's just, it's, <laughs> right. it's, 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 it's sort of a sign that it's a, uh, it's aged well, you know? Yeah, it's, exactly, yeah. Uh, so we're in uh, the suspension and the brakes of the car. So on the front, I run a 280ZX spindle out of a Turbo 83. Um, with that, it lets you set the front tires in. You don't have to use the big Hakusuka front spacer anymore. Um, and then we're able to adapt Willowwood front calipers and slotted rotors to the front. So kind of with that and then kept the stance, so I didn't want to cut the fenders. That's kind of one of my main things is that kind of wanted to keep that original GTR look so that's kind of all what the front suspension was built around. So with that, we run a T3 uh, camber hat on the front and then Coney yellows that are modified into the Twitty ZX struts. Um, for tires, we did a kind of a throwback, uh, BF Goodwrench white wall radial TAs. You know, it's kind of a 80s muscle car feel, but kind of like the look and they were this nice stance tire, um, kind of with that bubble wall sidewall. So it's kind of what made that choice on those. Um, for the rear, we have a rear disc conversion. So 
this was kind of, we built this, I built this myself off of the 280ZX calipers. Um, they're modified with a bracket to fit on the Hakusuka rear spindles. And then since we run the R200, um, lets you swap the half shafts into CV axles. So custom shocks, custom springs, do a custom spring rate for the ride height. And then we have uh, special bump stops that we made to kind of help with the ride height and keep the car from bottoming out. So with all the new conversions, um, we run the bigger master in the front for the 280ZX and then a, a proportioning valve to balance the brakes out. So as far as I know, I think there's less than 12. Um, that could be because a lot of people keep them kind of hidden in garages and stuff like that and you'll see them pop up here and there. Uh, there's quite a few on the on the west coast just because of you know laws. Old classics are out there a little bit more desired with emissions and you can kind of get away with that. But um, as far as I know, I think there's only a couple here in the Midwest and then there's a few in Canada. So if I were to take a guess, probably less than 20. Um, just from what I've seen posted in groups and but hopefully kind of some more start coming over and it's just kind of the trick now it's hard to get another get another one because the prices have ballooned so far and um getting here and everyone you know we've all dealt with the try to get an imported car and what that entails and it sucks and it uh it's expensive and unless you do it yourself and even then you don't know what you're getting so so everyone always asks you know how it is driving right hand drive car in the skylines the mirrors are the hardest thing to get used to yeah and once you get used to driving this, it's hard to go back to something where the mirrors aren't there. And sure. that's the hardest part, like shifting left-handed, you know, that's, you get used to that, but the mirrors, it really is the mirrors. And then as a passenger, you can see in the rear of your mirror and, but. That's yeah, so funny. Yeah. yeah. But added the, we had to put the radio into it. Um, this guy, I like driving with music. Yeah. And it has a bluetooth speaker and, and you can answer your phone while you drive and <laughs> you know just little things like that like you can't see that's it that's nice yeah. i mean that's just a, a convenience that yeah it's that's kind of one of the things it's like yeah. you can love or hate that but it's pretty um it looks clean enough Agreed. and then uh switch the speedometer over to miles per hour and it runs off gps so you don't worry about trying to do math and then tires are sizes different so now you're trying to do kilometer math and it's wrong and <laughs> you know been, been there so so for the interior of the car i kept it pretty much original to when i got it um the only thing that's kind of really changed is that the shifter is a short shifter from the rb uh, we did keep the original skyline wooden shifter when i got the car just kind of i liked it as a nice nostalgia piece but i did add a radio to the car so we run the kind of the jdm style front speakers on the deck um, and we made a carbon fiber plate to cover the deck plate and then a pioneer um kind of a low profile deck so you don't really see it when you drive to kind of ruin the the 70s feel of the car um, with the conversion um, we did do a lot of the harness got remade for the engine and all the lights and stuff just because of those old and it had some damage to it so uh, i have a carbon signal gauge pod with carbon signal speed hut gauges so modern gauges um, with the gauge gauge was converted to miles per hour so that's the only thing but it looks and it still has the original gtr font um, everything else, the wires are kind of tucked and hidden, and then the hull tech is actually behind the gauge cluster. So, um, other than that, the new fuel bo fuse box is down in the bottom here, but everything else is pretty original to the car, as from when I got it. So, just kind of keep that 70s look, but just have that modern, modern appeal. Um, still love the Nardi wheel. Other than that, it's pretty original to yet, to when we got it. Uh, so, this is the cold start of the car. Um, the fuel pump is a little bit loud. We did build a kind of a firewall between the rear seat and the fuel tank to just kind of quiet down the noise. Um, but they are a little bit loud, so that's kind of one of the features of the car, just because the pump sits externally of the tank. Um, with that, idle set, uh, it was dyno tuned. Um, everything was set on there. Idle is really smooth, just around 900 RPMs. Other than that, um, not much to it on the cold start. It is a little temperamental in the first start, just because of the ITBs, um, but once it has any kind of temperature into it, um, there's no issues after that, so. Nice. Just the st cold start of the engine. Um, Idle is nice, so you can hear don't, no ticks, no bangs, no nothing like that. 
Um, nice smooth idle, even with the ITBs. Uh, you run static fuel pressure, so none of that really changes, nothing that really bounces up and down. So um, with that, it's pretty smooth. It, uh, there's not much going on here, and it's kind of, kind of one of the ideas of the build is um, not have the carbs having issues with starting when it's cold or warm or anything like that. Um, starts, runs every single time. So one of the issues with that was we did keep the TPS and on the original GTR throttle linkage, so it does run that. Um, so it has with that, and then you can run the speed sensor and do a two-step if you wanted. So electronic cooling fans, even when the days it was plus 95 degrees, a car never gets above 190. So no more issues in traffic, none of that stuff um, that you had with previous setups or anything like carbureted. So that's kind of the idea. This is to take some of the negatives away, but still keep that sound in the feel of what the GTR was meant to be. So pretty torquey. I mean, it doesn't make a whole bunch of power. It made 161 when we dynoed it. Um, he didn't run it up. So a symptom that I kind of found afterwards is that he didn't run it up all the way to redline and I couldn't figure out why. Because of the angle of the gauges, it looks like you're about 200 RPMs off. So. Oh, sure. But we added some timing since then and um, but it was never meant to go fast. Right. I, I didn't really... There's faster things and if you wanted to... Right. If you want a fast car, I mean... Yeah. You just go get a Tesla. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, that's what it amounts to. It's, it's trying to get that noise and the sound and feel and and like that. So Yeah, and how much does it weigh, approximately? I believe it just hit about 2,400 pounds wow. in its original. So it's still kind of heavy. Um, yeah. You have a bigger dip in the backside and then, you know, all the stuff back there. But, yeah, so it's probably not. It's about 26, maybe 27. So it's still sort of heavy for a car. Um, sure. Or in the 70s, but I mean, it's honestly a great cruiser, like, and that's the idea of it. And like, as we can just kind of cruise through town, like, you'll just drive and you can go in third gear and fourth gear, and just kind of it just kind of idles nice. And it doesn't right. with the carbs, it would front and fire out of the carbs, and it was super sketchy. <laughs> and unless they work great from like 3,000 RPMs to five, sure, and then everywhere else it sucked. You know, so this starts all the time. And... You no, know, I think reliability over over speed. And, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Especially for right a classic car like this. Yeah. I mean, I think that's far more important. Everyone loves old cars until you have to drive an old car. Yeah. Um, you get a pop at leg from standing on the brakes, and, and then it doesn't stop and stuff right. like that. And, but even when it was ninety, you know, ninety plus degrees out, and no issues, it drives nice. We have you know big radiator, big fans now, and no overheating. You know you're not dealing with that. You can send traffic and go on the highway now with bigger tires, and it's not sketchy. And sure. hopefully, we'll put a new cab in it, and hopefully that fixes that sound. Just enough, just enough to have fun. Yeah.